Good morning, everybody. Uh, welcome to this information session on the new UK import controls for SPS goods being imported to GB from the EU, including Ireland. Some, some housekeeping first. The webinar today will be recorded and a, a copy of the slide pack and the recording on the department's YouTube channel will be circulated after the webinar for everybody in the next few days. Uh, my name is Damien Flynn and I'm head of the Brexit and International Trade Division in the Department of Agriculture, Food and the Marine. And my division is coordinating the department's response to all issues related to Brexit, including the new UK import control requirements. This webinar is an opportunity to provide an update on the new requirements the UK proposed introducing for exports from the EU uh, into 2024. Following the publication of the final border target operating model. It's important to underline that these changes that the UK will be introducing are significant, and it's really important that Irish food businesses who are exporting to GB are familiar with these new requirements and they make sure that they prepare to implement them because the UK is still our largest market for exports of agri food goods, and we wish to avoid any disruption to that trade. Just to note as well, I will be focusing on the, the new SPS requirements that the UK uh, is, will be applying for Irish goods and EU goods from 2024. But also to note that the, the, the target operating model, the final version, includes updates in relation to customs issues and customs requirements. So businesses should also be familiarised themselves with those requirements. In terms of today's agenda and what I will cover in the, in the presentation, I'll be reviewing uh, the, the recent UK government announcements and some key documents in relation to the UK requirements. I'll be highlighting new timelines for the introduction of these new SBS controls. I will touch on the use case risk-based approach to uh, uh, controls, which differs from the approach which the, the EU applies to GB goods or UK goods and, and third country goods. So it's important to know the UK requirements versus the EU requirements. I'll also highlight some of the clarifications which have been published in the final UK target operating model published in August. And I'll be honing in on some of the specific requirements related to animals and animal products, uh, specifically around composite products and animal byproducts, highlighting some issues there, and also in relation to plants and plant products. I'll also be identifying some key messages for businesses to prepare for these changes, including to engage closely with their competent supervisory authority. And I'll also highlight some of the preparations that the department is putting in place to, to help support business in meeting these new requirements. We will also have a question and answer facility uh, as part of the webinar. I would ask you to type the question, any questions you have into the question section. Uh, which is available to you on the on the webinar, and at the end of my presentation, we will we will have a, an opportunity to hopefully address some of those questions, and all, if not all of them. Any questions we cannot answer today, we will take them away and respond after the webinar, or potentially raise them with our, our UK colleagues for clarity. So. Coming to the recent announcement by the UK, they've finally published their final tar target operating model on the 29th of August. Uh, there's a link on this slide to that to that document. This is the final. Uh, uh, this is this is a final document from the UK. It's no longer a draft. A draft was published in April, with a consultation process which closed on the 15th of May. But this is now the final UK target operating model which confirms the final UK approach to SBS import requirements uh, for EU goods and also third country goods. I know there have been a number of deferrals of these requirements by the UK previously, but this is now, the, the BTOM is now sets out clearly what the UK will be requiring from EU exporters in terms of exporting to GB. This, the BTOM also sets out clearly how the UK will manage its biosecurity and trade border into the future, including for EU goods. Therefore, all food business, food business exporting to GB need to be familiar with these requirements. These represent a significant change from cur the current trading environment with the UK. 
and it's and it's really important that Irish food businesses exporting to GB are familiar with these requirements. I've also listed here on this slide some other key documents in relation to these requirements. So the UK have published a new set of export health certificates for EU agri-food imports. These certs are slightly different from are different from the EU certs which apply and the previous versions of UK certs. So it's really important, as I say, that businesses familiarise themselves with these new UK certificates. The UK is also taking a risk-based approach to applying import controls, SPR import requirements. And there are two documents here on this slide which set out those risk categories for products of animal origin, uh, which includes uh, a spreadsheet at CN code level saying which, which risk category applies to which products and also relates to plant, plants products. So again, it's really important for businesses to engage with these documents and familiarize themselves with, with, with these documents uh, if they are exporting to GB. One of the big changes in the final uh, UK target operating model relates to the timelines from which these new controls will apply, in particular for Irish goods being exported to GB. So now from the 31st of January 2024, export health certification will be required for me medium risk animal products, plants, plant products and high risk food and feed of non-animal origin. Also from the 31st of January 2024, uh, a night pass pre-notification uh, is required for SBS goods traveling from Ireland to, to Great Britain. This requirement for pre-notification has been in place for the rest of the EU since the beginning of 2022, but this requirement will now come into force for Irish goods from the 31st of January 2024. In the BTOM, the UK have also clarified that there will be no requirement for pre-notification of low-risk plant and plant products from the EU, so this is, is also a significant change. From the 30th of April, the UK have indicated that documentary and risk-based identity and physical checks at UK border control posts will, will be take place for SPS goods from the EU. However, this, this, this requirement will not apply to goods from Ireland. The UK, in the BTOM, the UK have indicated that the requirement for border control identity and physical checks for goods, SPS goods coming from Ireland, will be confirmed in 2023 but will not apply before the 31st of October 2024. This reflects the, facts that the, border, the fact that the border control posts on the West Coast UK ports servicing Irish, uh, Irish trade are not currently, the infrastructure is not currently built or in place. So we await further clarification from the UK, uh, hopefully in the next few weeks, about when these controls will apply to Irish goods. As I have mentioned, the final BTOM has confirmed that the UK is taking a risk-based approach to application of SBS import requirements. Based on a categorization of high, medium and low risk for different categories of products and the application of different requirements depending on which category your product falls into. These risk categories are different from the approach applied by the EU to UK and other third country imports of SBS goods. So as I have said already, it is really important that you engage with these uh, risk categories to understand which requirements apply to your goods you are exporting to GB. In respect of animals and animal products, uh, uh, products of animal origin, this be, different SBS requirements will apply for exports to GB depending on the risk category. I've also included again here on this slide the link to the UK's uh, C, uh, 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 guidance note in relation to risk categories, which includes the CN code level uh, spreadsheet, which identifies which category, of, which risk category applies to different goods. In respect to high risk goods, pre-notification export health certification have applied since the 1st of January 2021. This will continue from the 31st of January 2024. In respect of controls, uh, physical controls and identity checks, UK has been carrying out these controls at points of destination for high-risk goods since the 1st of January 2021. 
The date for UK control post inspections for Irish products, as I had mentioned before, will, will at the earliest commence from the 31st of October 2024. High risk goods include live animals, germinal products, and commodities which are under safeguard measures in respect of disease control issues. In respect of the big, one of the big changes is in respect of medium risk goods. So if your good is categorized as medium risk from the 31st of January 2024, these goods must be pre-notified. Uh, the UK border target operating model suggests for 24 hours in advance of arrival in the UK, or there is an option for a four hour uh, pre-notification derogation if that is pre-agreed with the UK Port of Health Authorities. For medium risk goods, an export health certificate will be required. And also the UK border control post uh, controls for Irish goods will commence at the earliest from the 31st of October, 2024. Medium risk goods include raw, chill, frozen meat and meat products, products with raw, made from raw dairy or raw dairy and raw milk, uh, animal byproducts in, in, in animal feed and fishery products, some fishery products. In respect of low risk goods, the UK have indicated that pre of animal origin, pre-notification will be required from the 31st of January 2024. However, no export health certificate will be required and there will be no documentary, regular documentary or ID and physical checks at border control posts. So if your good is, is classified as low risk, you will, require, you will need to pre-notify it on the UK's iPath system, but you will not require an export health certificate and it will not be subject to border control post controls. Products which are currently categorized as low risk by the UK include composite products, canned meat products, uh, non-raw heat-treated dairy products, so cheeses, powders, excluding infant formula. Infant formula is, is medium risk, so just to clarify that, and processed animal byproducts. I just wanted to highlight then some of, some of the other clarifications that are in the in, in the final border target operating, operating model. So in this document, the UK have confirmed that from the 31st of January, chilled meat preparations will continue to be permitted for import from GB, from EU to GB, but they will be classified as medium risk, so they will require an export health certificate to enter GB and to be pre-notified on IPALS. This is different to the current EU approach to, to these products, which are prohibited for import to the EU from the UK. So this is a significant difference. But just to clarify again, if you're if you're exporting chilled meat preparations to GB from the 31st of January, you will require an export health certificate and, and the product to be pre-notified on the UK's IPAS system. In relation to the export of samples, the UK the BTOM clarifies that commercial movements of animal products and plant products samples including for taste testing, uh, they must align with the commercial import of goods requirements outlined within the BTOM. So this, this means that if your product is medium risk, if the product is medium risk and it's a sample, it will still require certification and pre-notification. There are some different requirements for animal byproduct samples outlined in the BTOM and they're set out in paragraphs 134 and 137 of the BTOM. I would urge anybody uh, who is moving samples of animal byproducts to consult those those requirements and to raise any questions with us if they have any issues in relation to those uh, requirements. In relation to personal imports, including in, in, in luggage and post and par, par, parcels, uh, the UK authorities in the BTOM have committed to publishing uh, further information on this for those con small containments of animal products intended for personal use. So we await further clarification from the UK on this. In relation to business to business, post and parcel uh, commercial transactions, these will be subject to, to normal commercial import requirements. So that means if the products are medium risk or high risk, they will require export health certification and pre-notification on the on the on IPAS. And if they are low risk goods, they will require uh, pre-notification on IPAS. We are seeking further clarity from the UK on all of these, these issues, so we will share that once we get that clarity. I also wanted to touch on transit and land grid movements of SBS goods, and again, the BTOM provides some further detail about the, how, you, how the UK will be managing these movements. So for animals and animal products, 
transiting the GB Lambridge. If they're if you're if it's high, medium, or low risk animal and animal byproducts, animal products, uh, these will require pre-notification via IPAS. If they are high risk or medium risk goods, they will require a transit export health certificate. So it's not a normal basic export health certificate for import to GB. It's an, a dedicated transit export health certificate, and there are different requirements on those certificates. In relation to high risk and medium risk animal and animal products, these will be subject to entry and exit identity and physical checks at UK at UK border control posts. But again, at a date to be decided by the UK go government for goods from Ireland. And this will not commence before the 31st of October 2024. In respect of low risk animal and animal products uh, transiting the UK, these will not require uh, uh, transit health certificates or be subject to routine checks at UK border control posts. However, they may be subject to non-routine intelligent led checks by the UK authorities. And low risk goods, as I have said, will require pre-notification uh, on the UK IPAS system, even if they're transiting the UK. GB, excuse me. For plants and plant products, there is a difference in relation to plant and plant products transiting the GB Lambridge. The BTOM confirms that there is no requirement for pre notification via IPAS or the PEACHES system, and there's no requirement for phytosanitary certification for high, medium, or low risk plants products transiting GB. So, a very significant difference in relation to plant products compared to animal products. Plant products transiting GB will continue to require a signed declaration stating the goods are under phytosanitary transit and are packaged in such a way as there is no risk to spreading these pests through GB. So again, just to highlight, there's a very significant difference between animal products and plant products in terms of transit and movements of goods. I just wanted to put, put up some information here in relation to composite products. So the UK have confirmed that composite products are in the low risk category. Um, the, U, the definition the UK are applying for composites, as we understand it, is, in, is that set out in EU Commission regulate decision 2007-275. Uh, this has been re retained in UK legislation. I've set out there some of the detail on that. And just to confirm, composite products from the EU have been designated as low risk by the UK, and therefore pre-notification is required on IPAS, but there is no export health certification requirement. DAFM has also produced a trader notice. Uh, the information is here on this slide in relation to uh, uh, composite products. Um, which includes a decision tree on deciding if your product qualifies as a composite product. There are still some issues in relation to definition of composite products, so I would urge uh, any food business who are unsure about whether their product is a composite product or not to raise that with the department, but also to raise it with the UK authorities to get clarity on that. And I will have some uh, detail further in my slides in terms of contact points for that, both Irish contact points and UK contact points. I also want to do, uh, specifically draw attention to some specific issues and clarifications in relation to animal byproducts. So as with the message to all food businesses exporting to GB, is it is important for all exporters of animal byproducts to familiarise themselves with the export health certifications requirements which are applicable to their products. There are some attestations with some of the health certs which DAFM are currently seeking clarification on from the UK authorities. However, these are limited. So it's really important that uh, exporters uh, understand fully the attestations which apply on the export health certification in respect of their, their, their uh, health certificate. And, if they, and they should engage immediately with their DAFM contact, super, supervisory contact point on these issues. Specifically, I wanted to highlight a couple of specific uh, messages for certain products. So in relation to certification of feed, which includes animal byproduct, feed business operators are advised if their feed contains more than one type of AUP, it may require more than one cert, cert type for per consignment. Operators should ensure that they have the documentation available from these ingredients to facilitate onward certification to GB. In relation to processed animal proteins, certs, PAP, renderers are advised to review the certs applicable to their products and to note that each batch destined for GB will require micro testing and testing for the absence of ruminant material. So again, that's a very specific requirement. So businesses really need to familiarize themselves with those requirements. 
in relation to pet food, dog foods produced in a processed pet food plant to the 90 degree heat standard do not require certification. However, those which are produced in a third country and enter the EU on a dog chew health certificate or those produced in member state dog chew plants will require certification to GB. So again, just to provide that clarity there on that, that, that issue. And, that, and now I want to move on to plant products because the requirements for plant products are slightly different. Uh, again, there's a risk categorization pro uh, applied by the UK. And again, I include the link to the UK guidance on this in terms of plant products. So for high risk plant products, pre-notification has applied since the 1st of January 2021, 2021 and a phytosanitary certificate has been acquired since the 1st of January 2021. This will continue from the 31st of January 2024. Goods have been so subject to SPS checks of, of, of different percentages uh, at the place of destination. So high-risk plants include plants for planting, potatoes, certain seeds, timber, some fruits and vegetables and used farm machinery. For medium risk plant and plant products, uh, from the 31st of January 2024, the BTOM states that four working hours uh, uh, is advanced notification is required for air and roll on roll off freight, or at least one working day for all other freight modes. Phytosanitary certification is also required, and this will be facilitated through the eFito system. Again, the checks for controls at for Irish goods at four UK border control points uh, is, to, is to be confirmed, but the earliest will be the 21st of October 2024. Again, the UK listing guidance sets out which products for qualify under medium risk. In terms of low risk plants, plant and plant products, which includes many fruit and vegetables, from the 31st of January, there's no requirement for pre-notification, there's no phytosanitary certification required, and there will be no documentary ID or physical checks or UK border control posts for these low risk plants and plant products. There may be some post import surveillance uh, uh, inspections carried out by UK authorities. Further details are, are reported on that. So again, a, a, a significant difference in relation to uh, plant products compared to animal products. So as, as I say, it's really important to consult with the risk categories. Again, the link is here to the risk category for plant products. In terms of phytosanitary certification, uh, you must engage with DAFM early, 14 days in advance of, of, of export, if possible. Provide pre-notification through the DAFM uh, export certification system and provide any additional phytosanitary requirements as needed. Inspections will be required and you must be aware that specific additional testing may be needed in advance of export. So the message is, is for uh, exporters to engage with their GB importers to obtain any additional UK phytosanitary requirements for their commodities so that they can be addressed before export takes place. So I wanted to move on from, from what's in the BTOM and, and the latest updates in the BTOM and the new timelines to some of the key messages in terms of preparing your business to get ready for these changes. So as I have said, I would encourage all food businesses exporting to GB, whether they are supervised by the department, the HSE, local authority veterinary service, or by the Sea Fisheries Protection Agencies, to consider these messages and, 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 and requirements. You should be doing all of these things to prepare your business for the changes which are coming on the in relation to the UK trading environment from the 31st of January 2024. So number one, identify if you, need a certif if you need certification for your products. Is your product in use case medium risk category? If so, it will require an export health certificate. Do you know which certificate is required? You need to, you need to identify that health certificate for all of your products and confirm if it needs a certificate and to confirm which certificate you need. Number two, examine your supply chain. You need to know who's responsible for meeting each UK import requirement. So who is going to complete the pre-notification declaration on UK IPAS system? The UK has stated that this has to be a UK importer or a UK entity that will complete the IPAS notification. So you need to know who's doing that in your supply chain. If your food business is exporting low, medium or high risk products of animal origin to GB, are you registered on the list of establishments approved to export to GB on the EU traces system? 
this is really important. In particular, I would highlight for low products which are low risk because the IPAS system will require, will be using the EU traces list to allow an IPAS notification to be, to be made. So even though you may not be applying for an export health search through the EU traces system, you do need to be on the list of registered exporting plants to GB to allow a, a NIPAS pre-notification to be made. You also need to be clear about who is applying for your export health certificate if it's needed and, to, and ensure that this certificate is uploaded to YPAS because that is a key part of the UK process in terms of controlling imports. And thirdly, key message is, is to engage with your local supervisory team, competent authority supervisory team. As I say, whether that is the department, the health service executive, your local authority veterinary service, or the Sea Fisheries Protection Agent. And again, that engagement should, should confirm what health certification you need for your products. Can your business fulfill the attestations on those certificates that are required by the UK? Ensure that your business has all necessary data and information available to your certifying officer to allow them to sign the certificate and ensure your business processes and resources are aligned with the department or your supervisory team in your competent authority to support certification. So it's really, really important, I would say, to engage with, with your local supervisory team, make sure the business processes and all the information is available to allow certification to take place if it's required for your products. I would urge all businesses to engage with these messages and requirements and to start preparing for the changes that are coming for trade with UK from the 31st January 2024. In terms of, I just wanted to highlight as well some of the preparations the department is making. So we are continuing to engage with the UK authorities to get further clarity on the new requirements. So I would urge uh, anyone who has questions to raise them with us, we can raise them with the UK authorities. They can also be raised directly by you with the UK authorities. We are also reviewing the new UK import health certificates and requirements, and we are reviewing the business processes we are developing to support businesses in meeting these requirements to ensure that all these certificates can be, can be certified for us for all the products we are exporting to GB. Again, highlighting the need to engage with your supervisory team. So if you're, if you're supervised by the department, you should be engaging with that team. Um, but if you're supervised by the HSC currently or the local authority veterinary service or the SFPA, you should be engaging with them too to understand how certification can be provided if needed. I just wanted to highlight here as well, we have a number of other information webinars upcoming. So there's a further board via webinar next week at which the department will present at. There is also a joint DAFM and DEFRA a webinar upcoming on the 24th of October in relating to plant and plant products. So again, and further opportunity to engage on issues around plant and plant products. And the department will be rolling out a training program for all certifying officers and all food businesses export to GB beginning in November and running through December and January 2024. So again, once that date of training, the details of that training program have been finalized, this will be circulated to all food businesses and I would urge you all to engage with that because that's where the detail will be, will be set out about how to apply for a certificate, how to get a certificate and how you should interact with your supervisory authority in, 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 in meeting uh, the UK import requirements. As I mentioned previously, uh, these are some of the key contact points in the in Irish government contact points. So from the department's point of view, we have a Brexit call centre you have the contact details there. So I, I would urge anybody who has questions in relation to the UK requirements to raise them through these contact points. Equally, the department has a trace, a dedicated traces contact point, traces at agriculture.gov.ie. So if you have any questions about the EU traces system, which will be used to provide certification for animal products uh, to GBB, you should contact, contact us through that contact point. And there's also information on our web pages at the, at, the, at the reference here on the slide. In terms of the health services executive, if you have queries uh, in relation to export certificates, they also have a dedicated uh, uh, email address, exportcertificates at hse.ie. And as I mentioned previously, there are new requirements in relation to customs for exports to GB, and the, and the contact points for the revenue commissioners are here on the slide also. 
My final slide just has some of the UK contact points. So again, I would urge all businesses to contact the UK authorities if they have any questions about uh, the UK import requirements. Um, it's, it's important to highlight these are UK requirements and, and the UK will be implementing them. So the department is not in control of how the UK goes about that or the Irish government is. So I would urge all businesses to also take the opportunity to engage with the UK authorities to get clarity on what their requirements are, whether that is around uh, whether their product, what category, risk category their product is in, or what certification requirements there are, or if, they're, if, they're, if they feel as if they require an export health cert, or if there isn't an export health cert on the UK system or guidance yet, they should be raising that directly with the UK as well as with, with ourselves. We will be we will be raising issues with the UK, and we continue to raise UK with the UK, UK raise issues with the UK authorities. But it's also important for Irish stakeholders to engage with them as well, so that they get an understanding of what the key key issues are in relation to their new controls. So, as I said, yet yeah, the, the slide pack and the recording of the presentation will be circulated uh, to, call, to everyone after the webinar. And we're now going to move on to questions and answers.